and we're singing. We're singing. Dun, dun, we're singing. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Hey, Morgan. What up, bitch? Okay. Hey, girl. Hi. How are you? Hey. Um, well, you're probably surprised to hear slash see me because, as you know, I am dead. But I came <laughs> back to remind you that I am probably the best, most beautiful, most fun-loving friend you will ever have in your life. Wow. This is like a lot of information, and it's multi-tiered. Okay, so let's start with, like, you're really not that good of a friend. Like, to be honest, I have a lot of better friends. And then the second thing is that you're fully not dead. Okay, but do you remember how good I looked in that prom dress? Do you remember me in the prom dress hanging out the limo? Remember, we drank that champagne. You told me you'd never gone skinny dipping. And I was like, we've got to fix that. But then I died, girl. I this, died before you could skinny dip. Yeah, that's a really specific memory that you're clinging to. And I think instead of dying, what happened is you drank so much that you passed out. But then you woke up the next day and you were fine. No, I'm fully dead. One of the men I fucking killed me. And if, um, if you're I don't, dead, I, can I have all of your stuff? Like anything of your stuff that I want? Well, here's the thing. Here's the problem. I do have awesome stuff because I'm super rich and super beautiful and perfect in my prom dress, but I have a really horrible set of parents. Do, don't you remember your dad who turned private eye? He, right. Well, he turned private eye because he said that my dad killed me, but he, my dad did not kill me. I mean, your, your dad made a mistake. And don't you remember? And then you came over and you said, oh, look at those shoes. I remember putting that marker on those shoes. And I was like, hey, girl. There's a mystery here, and that's how you became a private eye. Wow, it's all coming back to me now. I'm so glad you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bitch. That was all a test. I'm oh. not dead. Oh, no. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Beauty and the Bitch. Uh, she's the bitch. I'm not dead. And this week, we're talking about Veronica Mars. <laughs> we are, and that was a reference to the very famous... Um, first season of Veronica Mars story arc that followed the murder of Veronica's BFF, Lily Kane. Mm -hmm. Lily Kane played by one of my doppelgangers, Amanda Seyfried. We essentially look exactly alike. It's so weird. You guys are like the same person. I know. I'm always signing uh, autographs for Mean Girls fans. And it's, I want to tell them like, I'm not Amanda Seyfried, but on the other hand, it's like, why crush their dreams, you know? You, you shouldn't crush their dreams. You should continue no. your lies. And I should sleep with them if they want to sleep with Amanda <laughs> Seyfried. I don't see what that <laughs> checks out to me. Morgan, no. Sometimes you need to pull me back, girl. That is horrible. <laughs> is that wrong? I'm gonna get, that's wrong. I'm going to get me too and my career, such as it is, will be over. That's too bad. The lines are very blurred, to be completely honest. So we, we're going to have to work on this together. Yeah. Well, OK, fair enough. I mean, it's the problem is not that many people look exactly like Amanda Seyfried. Like, I would say I look more like Amanda Seyfried than Amanda Seyfried does, you know? Yeah, I actually so. got a magazine the other day. It was crazy. Mickey, can you hear me? Hello? Hey, you're there. You can hear me. Oh, my gosh. That was weird. Let's That's see. Cool. Some, yeah. some, you know what? The ghost of Amanda Seyfried is haunting me because I'm besmirching <laughs> her good name. <laughs> She's not dead either. <laughs> Whatever. We're all dead. We're all not dead. I mean, that's the thing about Amanda Seyfried is her character <laughs> dies. Lily Kane dies before um, Veronica Mars starts. Yet she is a recurring cast member because they spend so much time on flashbacks and Veronica Mars like hallucinating her. Yeah, they really do. It's been a long time since I've seen that original first season. But um, what is your... Uh, what is your impression leading into the Veronica Mars universe based on that? Does it feel like sort of a choppy show, like 
like you think it's going to grow a lot or do you think right off the bat like they did a great job so far? Well, OK, let me say so. Uh, listeners, you may not know this. Mostly Morgan and I pick episodes together, but every once in a while I'll be like, oh, I really want to do this thing. Or Morgan will be like, oh, let's do this thing. And the other person is like, OK, girl, we'll do your thing because you know, we're so nice and, and we'll let you have your, your jollies and stuff. And this was a Morgan pick. And I was like, I'm not interested in this fucking show. This fucking basic blonde bitch. I mean, ev- everybody likes, um, what's her face? What's Kristen her face? What's her Bell. name? Kristen Bell. Exactly. Kristen Bell. Exactly. Everyone loves Kristen Bell. Me too. Even though she can't eat shit, but that's fine. <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, I didn't watch this show when it was on before, and the way it's described as like a noir teen drama or whatever, I was like, "Fuck this shit! This doesn't sound interesting." But the fucking pilot girl hooked me immediately. Let me list some of the things that go into this pilot episode. Ooh, okay. There are, uh-huh. uh huh. First of all, Karen slash Amanda Seyfried gets murdered immediately. Mm-hmm. She's immediately dead. And she wasn't a big star when she got this role, but I was shocked because to me, she's a big star. And I sure didn't expect her to die right off the bat like that. Right. And there are also motorcycle gangs. Veronica Mars gets um, date raped. Yep. There is, yeah, which was, I, I, I'm, I assume that's a mystery that will be answered. I'm only six episodes in, but they've mentioned it once and never again, which is a little bit odd, but whatever. There's parental abandonment, like right off the bat. <laughs> Um, and then, to top it all off, in episode two, who walks into their goddamn high school but Paris motherfucking Hilton? Uh-huh. Girl, when I saw Paris Hilton, I said, I'm done, Lord. Kill me now. <laughs> oh, you're such a high woman for season one, Veronica Mars. I am living vicariously through you. I'm glad that this was your reaction. I, you know what, girl? Here's the thing. Between the flip phones and the 90s nostalgia and the amazing cast of all these, like, 90s to early 2000s, like, hot actors and -and up-and-coming actors. Oh, and the plot of episode three of season one revolves around a trans woman who's trying to contact her estranged son who doesn't know that she's a trans woman. And... They're just, you know what, girl, this show was made for me. I loved everything about <laughs> uh, it. I'm and I, I would be friends with Veronica Mars, too. You're kind of the Veronica Mars of my life, except maybe slightly less successful. But that's really not an insult because she's good at fucking everything. But, she yeah. is. Um, I, yeah, I'm glad that you're really enjoying it. And I really like it. And And I think it's interesting because it, when it came out, it was such a different kind of show and it played on this really popular kind of show, which is a teen soap opera, but it added on top of it this like noir mystery layer. And I think that it just, it really changed teen soap operas. Like after Veronica Mars, like shit really had to start stepping its game up because it was so different and so popular. And I think that it's aged really well. I think so, too. I haven't seen anything so far that really dates it, you know? Um, um, I will say, it gave me... Did this come out before or after the OC? Do you that's, know? I was just wondering that. I'm going to Google that. Because it definitely gave me, like, OC meets Twin Peaks kind of vibes. That was kind of sort of what it hit me as. Do you know what year Veronica Mars came out? Veronica Mars came out in 2004 on UPN uh, slash, what's it called now? The CW. Uh, the CW. Yeah, UPN does not exist anymore. So, so sad. The first episode of the OC aired in 2003, so one year before. So def- definitely like a similar zeitgeist wave that the producers and the showmakers are riding. I mean, it feels similar. All these rich kids and then like a poor kid thrown in for flavor and... Yeah. Sort of the the class dichotomy is a big deal in both, you know. Yeah, I think that's a great comparison. Um, so did you love it immediate? Because you watched it like when it was airing, right? You were a big fan from the beginning. I so I did. I don't think I watched it like the very first season I aired, but I started watching it before it got canceled. 
And then uh, it got canceled and everybody was sad. And I kind of forgot about it because I went to college. Um, and then I think like at the end of college, maybe we rented, we walked to the video rental store and <laughs> rented all of the DVDs of Veronica Mars and like rewatch, like binge watch the first three seasons. And I think by that point, the, the movie had come out because everybody was so upset that the show got canceled that they, they did a Kickstarter or something and um, had a fan funded film made. And so we rented that and watched that. And yeah, so it, even though I saw some of it when I think I was still in high school, it really feels like a college show for me. Mm. Well, they go, I mean, season one's in high school, but I think they go on to college, don't they? Or something? Yeah, sort of. Uh, okay. The mo- uh, Yeah, the movie, like, jumps ahead to, like, college and, like, after college, I think. But I can't remember. I feel like in season three, maybe they're still in high school? I can't remember. Well, the the only reason, like like I said, I'm only, like, maybe halfway through season one right now, but um, oh, I was looking at the wiki because there's so many amazing actors. I was trying to figure out all the famous people who've been in it. And they were mentioning characters. I don't know yet. I haven't met yet, but they were all like college freshmen and college sophomores and stuff. So I assume they must at least, at least the show's purview must start to include the college more, even if she stays in high school somehow she's like so smart. She cannot have failed. Yeah. That's, yeah that sounds right. Yeah. I'm sure that's true. Yeah. Well, um, okay, so let me ask you this, Morgie. As a more or less original fan of Veronica Mars, at least much more original than me, can we talk about how unethical it is for her father to let her work all of these very difficult cases? Doesn't Isn't that, like, something he could be put in jail for? It's like child endangerment or something? Okay. I'm going to, uh, yes, uh, possibly, probably. But I will say that he does try to discourage her from doing dangerous or intense things. Like, I don't like maybe he hasn't started to do that yet. But like she tries to put herself in some really risky, shady situations. And he's not super pro that he's like, you're just a kid or whatever. But I think at the same time, you know, she has a really complicated life and he he has a complicated life too. Like it's hard being a single parent and like he has this really driving passion. And I think it's also a thing that they can bond over, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and you know what, you're right about that. And also to play devil's advocate to my original point. Um, if she has a fucking taser in her hand, she is fine, honey. She yeah, will yeah. tase any motherfucker comes across her path in the six episodes I've watched so far. She's used that taser at least four times. She would. She's good at that. She's not, and she shouldn't be afraid. She should be tasing people. People trying to rob her. Motorcycle gangs trying to take money from her until she's just tell her she's just a stupid little rich girl. Oh, and she also pulls a gun in season four. I forgot about that, but I did see that episode. She's grown up. Yeah, she went from taser to gun girl, and she got a nicer car too. Good for her. What did you think of um, season four? Oh, oh, listeners, just so you know, we're not going to spoil season four. Unlike NPR, no big deal, which spoiled it for me. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Couple, what did you think of season four? I came in hot with the spoilers. Um, I, okay. So I didn't know that Veronica Mars season four was coming out. And then all of a sudden, Hulu just dropped it. And they were like, surprise, it's out early. And I didn't know it was coming out at all. So I was immediately stoked. And they dropped every single episode instead of following the the Handmaid's Tale way that they do it. Um, and I'm not sure what goes into determining that. But anyway, so they dropped them all at once. And it was like on a Friday, maybe. So I was like gearing up for the weekend. I was like not feeling super hot that weekend. And so Aaron and I were like, oh, we're going to binge watch this. And that's what we did that weekend. And I was so fucking pumped. I loved it. I thought that it brought a lot of the old flair and charms back. Like it felt enough like the original one that I was, I was into it and it felt familiar and it was nostalgic. And then I think on the other hand, 
sometimes maybe it was a little too nostalgic. Like it felt like they did a lot of fan service with giving really small roles or cameos to people from the original cast to just be like, oh, yeah, do you remember this guy? He's there. Anyways, moving on. And there were like some meandering plot things. Um, but I think the I think the biggest thing that stood out for me the two the two biggest things is number one that I thought it was really great and I super enjoyed it and the second biggest thing was most of the previous Veronica Mars stuff really centered on like it was like a victim centric story right so season one really focuses on Lily Kane and all around her tragedy a bunch of other crazy shit happens while they try to figure that out but I felt like in this fourth season, it was like a bunch of crazy shit happened and we kind of don't care about the victims personally. And it's just like a platform to be like, look at all this crazy shit. And Veronica has to deal with all of it. So that was like a little different. Yeah, I mean, the overarching now, again, I've only watched a couple episodes of season four because then I got into it. So I wanted to start from the beginning. But um, the overarching like plot of season four is that there's like a a terrorist who's bombing the town, right? Is that like the, the big villainous story yeah. or whatever? Yeah, basically. And then like, and then there's a lot of stuff tied up within like who's getting bombed and like why they're getting bombed and like what are the, you know, what are the repercussions and motivations for the city as a whole? But yeah, the central plot is like bombs. Yeah. <laughs> Which is scary. I mean, bombs are scary. I'm afraid. Totally. They're very scary. Um, but Morgan, you haven't even mentioned yet Jason William Doring as Logan and his amazing ripped body. And I was talking to him last week on the phone <laughs> and he predicted that you would not mention him. You would snub him. That was one of my favorite parts of season four so far. When he comes out of the ocean and those tiny James Bond swim trucks and he's got that V and those shoulders are as wide as the horizon. Oh, my God. Oh. I'm really oh. glad that this is your stance on uh, the character Logan and the actor. I can't fucking stand Logan, and it's hard for me to get past that, to even look that he works out uh, 30 hours a day. Like, he must never quit working out because he is hella ripped. Are you saying that Logan is a butterface? Is that what you're trying to say, Morgan? You hateful I, being. I don't like his face, and I hate the character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, no. I haven't. Now, I know in literally the pilot, she uh, Veronica Mars is like, every school has a psychotic asshole. Logan is ours. <laughs> so, like, literally, that's the that's the quote. So I was like, OK, he's a bad guy. And but then I was like, no, wait, because he looks so different. I mean, 15 years later, he looks very different. I literally had to Google to be like, is this the same Logan? Because they really do come a very long way because he's like almost a villain. Um, in season one or at least what I've seen so far he's a really trash character and like he is like it's lamentable because because you learn more about his life and like why you know they try to be like this is why Logan is the way he is and like yeah but he's still that way you know and and by the time he gets to season four he's done a lot of personal work um there's like a big commentary on like is Logan even the same person anymore? Because like he, because he like goes to therapy and he's like really worked on all of his problems. And now he's this like sort of ideal super stand up boyfriend type. Um, whereas as you say in episode one, they're like, Logan's a fucking psycho and he is a fucking psycho. You know, I read <clears throat> that, <clears throat> pardon me, Jason William Doring, who plays Logan, he originally auditioned for um, Duncan Kane, oh. who the brother of Lily Kane, uh, yeah. uh, Veronica Mars's dead best friend slash her ex boyfriend, who was yeah. kind of like the high school love of her life. It seems like, yeah. at, at least so far. Um, so he originally auditioned for that role, but they were like, "Nah, girl." I guess maybe they were like, "You're too ugly for this role." I don't know. But then he auditioned for Logan, and he played it as if he is the one that date rapes her in the pilot oh yes so he auditioned to be like a villainous villain of all villains i mean literally a rapist and also you know a jerk um and uh and i guess fan reaction to him just changed and the writers decided to take him in a different direction because now he's her studly boyfriend who may or may not be like james bond <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, I will say, so Veronica and Logan are both really fucked up people. Like they're both deeply fucked up. And so it, it, the way it plays out is like, it kind of, it doesn't like, Oh, it makes so much sense that they'd be together. Cause they're both so fucked up, but it does kind of make sense. Cause it's like, when you're that fucked up, who else can you be with? And they, they go through in this little fucking town, Neptune, California or whatever, you know, they're going through Lily's death right now. And they're going to go through a myriad of tragedies and crazy bullshit over the next three seasons. So like, it makes sense that they would, remain close and that it would be hard for them to like find other people who could like understand their experience you know what i mean totally yeah yeah it seems like a very strange town to grow up in it would it would result in a very strange kind of teenager which they all they're all very odd i mean they're very odd people um to tell me this morgan do you think that duncan kane is hot or not back in the day i thought he was hot Okay, now now we really are in disagreement because I think that sleepy-eyed motherfucker, I don't think he's hot at all, but I do think that he looks like an early 2000s heartthrob. They all have kind of a similar look, and he's definitely in that camp, you know? Yeah, I'm looking at him again right now, and uh, he looks like a rapist. I don't like his face. <laughs> you know, You know who he reminds me of? Do you know in The Craft? the boy that um, the main girl's so in love with and she casts a love spell and he becomes like totally infatuated with her. Do you know who I'm talking about? Oh, I don't. I haven't seen that movie in forever, but I like the way you phrase it. Well, there's that, there's like a douchebag boy. Uh, he's, he's essentially the same kind of boy and he looks very, very similar. Um, he, I mean, he's hot, but he's just, he's, um, I don't think he would play a heartthrob today. Because he's got that kind of stupid, douchey face going on, which was very, like, um, desirable back in the day. Yeah, he, he looks very early 2000s. Let's see. I'm going to, I'm just Googling the craft love interest. Now I just want to see him. I mean, no, you, listeners can't see this. You can't see it, Morgan. But really, it's just for me. And I'm just keeping you updated on my life. Love it. Mm-hmm. Nope, actually, the internet has, there's nothing. All I got was a bunch of stuff about puffy paint and making valentines. That sucks. Okay, well, that was a failed Google. Anyway, um, I'm just saying, he looks like a heartthrob for the time that he is, but he's not my choice. And you know, that actor, Edward Dunn, is now a fucking lawyer. He's not even an actor anymore, so. Uh, Yeah. Well, happens to the best of them. I guess so. I guess so. Um, let me see. Who else is hot? Who else is hot? Let me... Oh! 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 We haven't even mentioned yet that fucking Logan, who you said truly, or truly described as trash, has fucking trash parents, motherfucking Harry Hamlin and Lisa Rinna, who are actually married in real life. Uh-huh. Play his parents on the show. Are you fucking... I screamed <laughs> when I saw Lisa Rinna walk out of that mansion. I was like, what?! And then Harry Hamlin drove up in a limo, and I was like, y'all, I can't do this. I can't. And then I had a heart attack, and that's what killed me, and that's why I am your Lily <laughs> <Lily King. laughs> I know, dude. I, the casting is, like, insane. Rob Thomas has friends in high places. Yeah, Rob Thomas. Now, you were telling me something. He's the producer of this show, or, like, the show writer? So he's like the show runner. Um, so he has like a myriad of roles, but like essentially he created Veronica Mars. And I think he's probably like the head writer and he's probably a producer and like a whole bunch of other shit and maybe sometimes a director, but like the show runner is like, this is their show, right? Like with, um, Game of Thrones, it's those two dudes, DB Weiss and the other one. Mm-hmm. Like, the ones I will never forgive for what they've done to me and the rest of the world. Yep. Right, right. So like, Game of Thrones is their show, so they have their hands in all the pots. So that's Rob Thomas on Veronica Mars. And he actually, um, he has a couple of different things that have, like, a pretty good following. I, I don't know his full career history, but I know Veronica Mars has a huge cult following. Fans of Veronica Mars call themselves Marshmallows. And Marshmallows are very invested. So we're pretty stoked to have the show back. But he also went on to do, after Veronica Mars, he 
made this really popular show on stars called party down. And it has largely the same cast of Veronica Mars. So, so a lot of the people you see, um, you'll either see in cameos in every single episode of party down or as the main characters, which is really exciting. Um, I, I just in, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but in episode six, which is what I'm on right now, I glimpsed for the first time, Ryan Hansen, who plays some motherfucker by the name of Dick Casablancas. He's he's the pretty blonde boy in Party Down. Yeah, yeah. He's so funny as Dick Casablancas. Um, And his dad is also Dick Casablancas, but he goes by Big Dick. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Oh, that's Big Dick from season four. The guy who's in charge of the nuts. Yeah, yeah, that's a. Oh, it's it's kind of fun to watch this way. Like having knowledge of the future, it's kind of like being a witch in the world of Veronica Mars. You know? Yeah, you you are a witch. Yep, that's what's happening. Uh Um, So he so he made Party Down with a lot of the same cast, and he uh, I think Paul Rudd was like a co producer on that show. So he also had like some other good connections for making that. And then another show that he's currently running that's really popular right now is another CW show called I Zombie that people are really into. I haven't, I don't know. Our friend, our dear friend Sarah Pants said that I should watch I Zombie, but I don't know. It just looks lame to me. I don't know why. I'm just not into it. I don't know. Do you like it? Is it like your jams? I started watching the first season surely because the main character is the star of A Christmas Prince and A Christmas Prince 2 Cole and the Royal Wedding and the forthcoming A Christmas Prince 3 Cole and the Royal Baby, which everybody knows is going to be just as good as the first two. Um, So I started watching it because of her, because I like her, and I just couldn't super get into it, but I heard that it really progresses like towards the end of the first season and then moving on with like the next several seasons. So I'd be willing to give it a try, but there's just so much good TV. It's hard. It's hard. I just, well, um, yeah, it's difficult. Oh, um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, Rob Thomas called me and he said that your obsession with Christmas Prince is a catastrophe and a disaster. And uh, he doesn't want you to watch any of his shows anymore. So um, he's just mad because he didn't create a Christmas Prince, the <laughs> successful Netflix original film. And me and my friends who like a Christmas Prince don't care what he thinks. That's totally fair. And hey, don't shoot the messenger, okay? It's just I was talking to Rob Thomas and he mentioned it. I thought you'd like to know, okay? That's, thank you for letting me know. You're so welcome. Speaking of um, things that um, I would like to. I, I don't know how, how to make this transition. Do you remember Weevil? Yeah. Do you remember that character? Weevil's in season four. Oh, fuck, yes. Okay, I haven't seen him yet in season four. That motherfucker is so hot to me. I, I, it's like a a, a, a burning fire in my loins spreading <laughs> both ways when he comes on screen talking about his giant dick, riding his motorcycle, Taking off his helmet and licking his lips, I just man, yeah, goddamn, okay. he's a bad boy. He's so bad, and I don't care. Does she ever hook up with him? She doesn't, but they—he's a really good friend for her. You know what? That's racist because he is the hottest goddamn boy in the <laughs> town. Veronica, a very complicated person. Yeah, she's a racist. She's a goddamn racist, is what she is. Francis Capra. That's his name, Francis Capra. Yeah, mm. I, really, I really like the character of Weevil because I feel like Veronica spends a lot of time being like, she's like trying to do good with this private investigator stuff, but she's always right on the edge of crime. And I think that uh, Weevil is a good friend for her because he's so crime adjacent that she understands that not all crime is bad and that like not all criminals are bad you know mm, and I, I think he, he helps her get perspective um and I think he helps her keep perspective even though I think that they're not as close they're not as close in season four as they were in the original three that's too bad and and I'm not just saying this because he's hot but I think he should have been a love interest and maybe if this show you know was actually created today for the very first time, 
maybe he would be considered because they have amazing chemistry together, I think. Yeah, They're so true. funny, and you can tell they care about each other, and, oh, I love him. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm glad at least he gets to show up in season four. I, I'm totally good. Is he still hot? Um, He hasn't aged as gracefully as some characters. Morgan? But I, Morgan? Don't he's you do this to me. Every time a hot boy gets ugly, an angel loses its wings, and you know that. I didn't say he was ugly. I said he didn't age as gracefully as other people. I'm devastated. <laughs> Cancel the podcast. It's over. <laughs> Actually, um, Morgie, speaking of cast members, I have just a little game for you, okay? Oh, okay. So I'm going to read out three people, okay? This is kind of like two truths and a lie. Two of these people were on Veronica Mars, the original incarnation, and one of them was not, okay? I want you to tell me which one is the lie, okay? Got it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Jane Lynch, which everyone knows from Party Down and Glee and a thousand other things. Best in show. Tessa Thompson, who everyone knows as Valkyrie. Or Sean Ashmore, who is Bobby Drake slash Iceman in the X-Men movies. Oh. Which one was not in Veronica Mars? Okay. Um, I, I remember Tessa Thompson. I remember her face. In the original one, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so she was in it, and then I have to pick between the other two. Uh huh. Jane Lynch, um, or um, Sean Ashmore, Iceman. Shit, I like can't remember that person's face or think of what they might have played. So, and I really I can't remember Jane Lynch and Veronica Mars either. But since she's in Party Down, I'm gonna say Jane Lynch was also in Veronica Mars. Okay, you just very brilliantly avoided my trick. You're totally right. Yes. Jane Lynch plays, um, well, she might come back, but what I've seen her as so far is, do you remember the episode where the, the like, popular rich kids try to steal the school election so they can keep their pirate points so they can order in food at lunch? Remember oh, that I crazy shit? I do remember that. Jane Lynch plays the teacher with the sweater tied around her who is, like, on the side of the popular kids and doesn't want them to do a recount of the student council votes. Okay. It's a delicious role, and she's such a fucking cunt in it, if I can use a word that I know people hate when applied to women. <laughs> and she's hateful, though. She's horrible. And she plays it so well. So you're right about that. And Tessa Thompson, I haven't actually seen the show yet, but she plays a love interest for <laughs> Wallace, um, who we haven't talked about at all so far. Yeah, he's Veronica's lovable friend, but, uh, I, uh, yeah, yeah, Wallace, Wallace is cool. He's, look, here's the thing. He is, um, not a very good actor. I think this was like his breakout role or something. I don't know. Um, he's very forgettable and, you know, uh, whatever. That just is what it is. But Tessa Thompson plays his love interest at some point, and, yeah. and that was one of her earliest roles. So now she's everywhere. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, she got written out of the show because she's talking to another guy while she's with Wallace, and, like, the audience hated her for that. <laughs> yeah. And so much so that they wrote her out the damn show. So yeah. here was my trick. Do you remember uh, Troy from season one? He's very briefly Veronica's love interest for, yeah. like, two or three episodes. Yeah. Okay. He's her first real boyfriend that we see her with um, in the show. And he is Aaron Ashmore, twin brother. Shut up. I'm not fucking with you, girl. Twin brother of Sean Ashmore, who plays Iceman in the X-Men movies. Well, look, their family's doing just fine. Oh, yeah, they're doing great. And I, being twins, they're both hot. So that's great. Good for them. Um, yeah, when I first watched it, I was like, you are kidding me. Because, you know, I was still reeling from Paris Hilton. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> fucking Iceman walks in. And then, in a Veronica Mars-esque twist, I find out it's not fucking Iceman. It's his twin goddamn brother. Wow. Whoa. That's a real cliffhanger. We went on a roller coaster. Girl, I could not believe it. I could <laughs> not. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Um, Let me see. Okay, here, here's a... 
maybe a, a bit of an abrupt about face, but back to season four and no spoilers. Yes. I find, I found so far in season four that Veronica, she's a bit more abrasive as an adult than she was as a teenager. Do, does that hold any water with you or is that just bullshit? Well, I think she's more guarded. Um, and I don't know. I mean, like a lot of shit happens to her over the years, but I mean, she has grown up and like people do change a little bit. So I think that I think the heart of who she is is still there. But I think I understand what you mean by that. Well, and actually, I I, I may have misled you a bit. I I think she's the, from what I've seen of season four, very similar. But what is charming in a teenager, like her guardedness and her aloofness and her um, brashness and and all these things, uh, they're charming when she's a teenager. But when you're an adult and you're still all of those things, I just find it slightly less charming. And I also was um and I, i'm just just i'm 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 dancing around the word unlikable because lord knows that i don't need the feminist to rip me to pieces um but i she she's less likable as an adult to me than she was as a teenager and it may be because she hasn't changed enough in season four like she did seem like a very similar type of person to me uh, I think it's interesting to talk about whether or not Veronica's likable because I don't think she is a likable person. And I and I think that, like, so in the original run, she's kind of like this outsider, right? Like you said, like, she's the poor kid mixed in with the rich kids and she had this really rich best friend and, like, there's all this tragedy. And so she's, like, kind of on the outside of, of a lot of the society that she lives in. And I think that that's part of why she's so like quick witted and guarded. And like, she likes to do, you know, she's all like doing her own research and she's super like behind the scenes and shit. And like, she's kind of like, she doesn't really need anybody. Like she has friends, but she's not like, she's not, not that she's not a loyal friend, but like her friends aren't everything. Like she's more selfish. Like she's more Veronica centered. Um, And I think that, all of those things carried over to adulthood, except that now for some reason people like her anyways. Like that was one of the things that felt different in season four was like, she didn't feel like an outsider anymore. Like she felt like really included and on the inside and invited to all the cool parties and like friends with all these random people. And like, that was different, but she's still kind of a bitch. Yeah. Still so- well, well, yeah, she definitely is. Well, you know, that's interesting because, I mean, so she's almost like the um, classic noir anti-hero, really, in a very real way, right? Like, yes. the private eyes in all those movies, they're always assholes. Mm-hmm. Always. Um, so I they- guess, you know what, that makes sense. Because her dad's not mean. He's, like, so sweet. You know what, though, Keith? You see this? I can't remember too much about his personal interactions in the original run, but you see it a lot in season four. Like, Keith is so likable, but he will fucking play you. Like, he is super likable, but, like, he always has an agenda with what he's doing. I guess that's the, the like, yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I guess that's the noir influence and, like, the the true crime kind of influence. I don't know. I mean, I still like Veronica Mars um, because I like who she is in that world of Neptune, which, frankly, you have to be tough in Neptune, honey. That's a crazy-ass, rough-ass town. So. <laughs> right i would not want to live there no thank you um i don't know i just think it's i I like that she's you know maybe not traditionally likable but i do wish that she seemed a little bit different in season four than she actually does because i i did kind of feel like especially because logan right is like a whole different person and yes that's a lot of the like drama personal drama between them is like he's changed and it seems like she hasn't changed and furthermore she doesn't want him to change and get better seemingly yeah um, in the beginning yeah it's hard for her to deal with his growth probably because her lack of honestly exactly exactly it's like how i've grown into this beautiful butterfly and you're still a grubby caterpillar you know, uh, a grubby caterpillar who gets shit done, though. 
That's true. I just flitter <laughs> around all day. Why do you have to be homophobic, Morgan? Jeez. Oh my god! Now I'm flitting. Now I'm flitting and flattering. It's just ingrained in me. Um, <laughs> my so my very favorite thing popped on to Mars, and I think the most memorable thing is the Keith and Veronica relationship. Like her and her dad together, they have such good chemistry. They really do. They're it's believable. They're hilarious, and they're so kind. I mean, I'm sure there are moments where they're not kind to each other, maybe. But from what I've seen so far, they just love each other so purely. You know, it's very, it's a really, it's a really sweet relationship. And it's really the heart of the show, isn't it? Is their oh, relationship. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of talk in season four about, like, what the outcome was going to be. And, like, there was a lot of foreshadowing that we might lose a character. And, like, the world was like, if we lose Keith Mars, Rob Thomas, you were dead to us. Like. You were dead to us, and there is no Veronica Mars without Keith Mars. And honestly, like, I feel the same way. Like, if something happens to Keith, like, it's not the same show. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's a really great character. And that actor hasn't really done much else, has he? I'm going to look him up on IMDb. Oh. I, it's weird, because I've definitely seen him, like, cameos and stuff. Um, he, he cameoed in the very first episode of Party Down. He was really funny. But, yeah, I mean, he definitely... Uh, he hasn't been, like, a lead in anything that's something I watched. Let's see. So his name is Enrico Colantoni, and he was in Galaxy Quest. And oh, in... Yeah. I don't remember that at all. And he was also in AI Artificial Intelligence, which okay. who saw that? Nobody. And spoilers, he plays the murderer in Artificial Intelligence. Oops, sorry, y'all. Um... And he is in Shark Week. <laughs> okay. And oh, he's in iZombie. He's oh. evidently a regular in iZombie. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'm just swiping through here. I mean, I, he's actually been in a bunch of stuff, but it's just stuff I haven't watched. So yeah. many different TV series and stuff. Um, yeah. Nothing. Oh, wait. Oh, no, yeah. He was in Hot in Cleveland, that show about the Cougars, you know? Did you ever watch yeah. that? I didn't okay. watch it, but I know what it is. Okay. He was in Brothers and Sisters for an episode. I mean, the motherfucker's working, so. He's working. He's doing fine. Oh, and he played um, Dr. Cyrus Bortel in Kim Possible. Oh, oh shit. God. That's Holy a, God. a real career marker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and he was in Just Shoot Me. Okay, he's done a lot of shit, actually. He, he's, oh my God, I just keep scrolling on IMDb. He's done a lot. So, so good for him. Anyway, whatever. Um, yeah, he's great. I really enjoy him. I think he's a good actor. Yeah. Yeah. He's so sweet. Um, oh, you know what we haven't mentioned yet? Much like me, Veronica Mars uh, slash, um, uh, uh, Kristen Bell does not fucking age literally at all. She looks exactly the same. It's wild. Her skin. How does she have that skin? It's girl. I I'm so sorry, but I'm gonna have to murder her and steal her <laughs> skin. It is the finest skin I have ever seen. Yeah, I agree. I, it's shocking. And frankly, it's more shocking because let's just be real. The bitch is white. Is white. And we do not age like that. A oh. black person, yes. Any brown person, possibly. An Asian person, yes. Until they get so old, their face cracks all at once. Which but is white people. Yeah, exactly. But white people, we age quickly and irreversibly, and I don't know how she's avoided it, but she needs to tell the world. And, and she better not say it's just fucking drinking water, either. And she's so pale that, like, she must use a lot of, like, sunscreen. Like, I just, I don't... I think she's a... She's an android or something, girl. You just watch. This is a prophecy. She's going to take over the world and be empress of the world and rule us all with her mechanical powers because she's not right. She's not human. She does look good, though. She looks great. She looks amazing. Yeah. Let's see. What else? What else? I don't know. I mean, overall, I would say even I, I, there have been some mixed reviews on season four. And I, obviously, as I've said a thousand times, I'm not there yet. But I would say people should just go back and watch the original Veronica Mars on Hulu. That would be my recommendation because 
uh, it's given me so much fucking life. Yeah, I think that's a great recommendation. And I think it's safe to say that if you like or love the original Veronica Mars, you're going to also love the new season. Um, there's also that weird movie that happens in between season three and the new season, the back from the mid 2000s. It's forgettable as far as the plot, but it does introduce a lot of important concepts, including um, Veronica and Logan getting back together. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that, um, let's see, that is not available to stream for free anywhere, but it is um, on HBO. So if you have an HBO subscription, you can just go ahead and watch that little 2014 movie as well. Yeah, and if you can't, I'd say just read the wiki on that film, because there is like a couple important character interactions that really do matter for season four. Um, mostly boy stuff, mostly boy stuff for Veronica. But it's worth at least reading a recap before jumping into season four. But I think that I think you guys are going to fucking like it. I think Veronica Mars is so charming and it just brings the right amount of nostalgia that it's really enjoyable and leaves you wanting more. However, Logan is already ripped for the movie, right? (laughs) So if you're a Logan lover, you might want to watch the movie. Does he take his shirt off, Morgan? Do you remember? Oh, I mean, he's got to. Isn't that like. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. I'm I'm going to melt into a puddle. That man is so... Fu- oh, God. Mm. It's like insane. Like, he... Like, how do, How much does a person have to work out to look like that? Like, I, I can't don't know. even fathom. I don't know. He, he's got to be doing every kind of... Every workout video fad that there has been between 2004 and now, he has done to his fullest. He's done X-Stream, and he's done Z-Stream, and he's done... um. What's that one that with the Bowflex? He's on the Bowflex, and <laughs> it, girl, he's he's not eating rice, and then he's only eating bananas for a month. I don't know why he's doing, but that working. motherfucker has a body that will not quit. Yeah, it's working, it's working. Mm. Okay. Uh, do you have a plug for this week, Morgie? I do, girl. Okay. So in season four of Veronica Mars, Veronica and Logan are binge watching on Hulu harlots and so after i got done with veronica mars i decided to binge watch harlots on hulu and um it's a fine show it's not that good to be honest but uh hulu used it as a marketing ploy and it worked on me and now i'm passing it along to you great so you're giving us the the virus of commercialism right now yeah yeah but i mean if you're like kind of bored it's vaguely interesting and lots of pretty costumes, right? Because it's about, like, prostitutes in the 19th century or something like that, it, maybe? It's very pretty to look at. And actually, the cast is full of people you already know. Um, one of the one of the main harlots is um, from Downton Abbey, the sister who played Sybil that dies in Downton Abbey. Mm. She's, she's one of the main harlots, and she's really fucking good. And then uh, Liv Tyler is a, a main character in season two onward. And there's a bunch of other familiar faces. Oh, so it's fun and it's interesting. Um, oh, Theon, the guy who plays Theon from Game of Thrones is in. <gasps> Shut up. Shut <laughs> up, Morgan. Shut up. You know I love him. Oh, my God. Alfie. Alfie something or other. Alfie, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Well, I'm going to have to. I'm gonna, is he in season one? Like, is I, he there from the beginning? I think he comes in season two. Okay, well, I'll just start watching season two then. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Oh, shit. uh, It's a very dramatic show, and I love melodrama, and it's so catty because it's, like, all of these prostitutes and, like, every woman for herself. But, um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, fucking Veronica Mars catfished me into watching Harlots, and I did. I watched all of it. So, there you go. Now, tell us the most important information, being horny and thirsty as we all are. Does Alfie Allen take off his shirt in Harlots? He takes off his shirt, but you don't see his dick. Do we see his butt? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes! Okay, awesome, okay. Yeah. That's a really good recommendation, girl. That's <laughs> I'm more excited for this plug than any other plug you've ever given, I think. Okay, girl, <laughs> well, Google his episodes, because he's not, like, in every single episode, so maybe just watch it. Okay, yeah, because I don't, I, I mean, even Liv Tyler can't get me to watch, but mm, Alfie Allen's butt, I am in. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Well, I have also been watching a Hulu show. Um, my plug this week is What We Do in the Shadows, mm-hmm. which is currently streaming, season one on Hulu. Now, Morgie, you watched the show already, right? I did. And it um, the very first episode of the show premiered at South By this year in Austin, and I got to go see it. Oh, my God. You're like one of the O-Niners right now. Oh, <laughs> Veronica. Oh, can we return? I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> remembered something fans of veronica mars call themselves marshmallows no yeah yeah no that's, that's a veto a- honey that's, that's a bad that's bad that's how it is that's the way it goes that's up there with mariah carey fans calling themselves butterflies or whatever the fuck i, I don't have time for this shit nobody calls themselves butterflies that bitch is played well, that's true. That's factual with those whistle notes and shit. But no, Marshmallow, where I'm vetoing that. Y'all call yourself something else. Mars Heads. I don't care what. Mars <laughs> Rovers. Call yourself Mars Rovers. That's a way better name than Marshmallows. Too late. The subreddits have already existed. No, I will fight with people on Reddit, honey. That's go, fine. Go do that tonight. Please get <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, off air, I've got to tell you some point about um, all the fights I've been having on Reddit. The bisexuals <laughs> and I have been fighting on Reddit, honey. And uh, things uh, have been getting very uh, personal, okay? That's a weird part of who you are, and I really, really love it. You know how it started? My very first fight on Reddit was over Dumbledore being gay yeah. in the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. And uh-huh. that gave rise to this whole empire of my arguments on Reddit. Yeah. People are just so goddamn stupid and mm, whatever. I'm not going to get into it. It's fine. <clears throat> it's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. Anyway. What we do in what, the shadows. You're loving it? Yes. What we do in the shadows. Yes. I love it. Um, so it's produced by Jermaine Clements and it's hilarious. Now, is it a remake of what we do in the shadows, the movie? Because so, I haven't seen that movie. It's an ex- Extension. So it's um, so it's Jermaine and his friend Taika Waititi, who's really famous right now for doing Thor Ragnarok and a bunch of other stuff. So it's like them, their pet project, and they made the this what we do in the shadows mockumentary like years ago, like it's many years old at this point. Like I don't know how old, and it it you know it kind of has like a cult following but it was like this little thing but now that taika watiki's like blowing up and he has a lot of fandom um they were able to get a network to green light extending it into a show and so the show takes place in staten island but the movie takes place uh somewhere somewhere overseas like in transylvania or some stereotypical place but this one is like the vampires have migrated to New York and now they like live in this really weird place and are vampires. It is so fucking absurd and funny. I love it. My favorite gag, and this is a non-spoiler gag, okay, but in a recent episode I saw, the vampires are fighting with the local werewolves, right? Which, you know, like they do. Like they do. And there's a female vampire who is my favorite. Oh, shoot. I don't remember her name. Um. Anyway, there is a female vampire, and she's my favorite uh part of the show. And she loves to insult the werewolves. So she'll say like something like, "Um, I agree with the mongrel scum bitch or something, right?" When she's referring <laughs> to this werewolf, and then the werewolf always claps back with this like really lame insult, like "Um, shut up, you Edwardian hussy" or something like that. And then they always do a take of the female vampire being so offended <laughs> by this horrible insult when she's just said, like, the harshest, cruelest thing to this werewolf. And it happens, like, two or three times in the episode. And every time I laughed harder than the time before. It's uh, so funny. If you like the kind of shit that we cover in this podcast, you should really watch What We Do in the Shadows currently streaming on Hulu, and a really good fucking time. It's, like, it's interesting because, like, I feel like for us it's perfect content, but, like, it's not for everyone. Like, I can, like, you know what I mean? Because it's, like, this fake mockumentary-style dry comedy, and, like, I live for it, but I can just imagine people I know in the real world like seeing it for the first time and being like, what in the actual fuck is this? (laughs) Well, I think they should just 
sit down, smoke a doob, and enjoy a couple episodes. And sooner or later, they'll start to laugh. They'll get into it. It is very weird. It's one of, it, it's weird. It's very odd. But it's like, it's a mix of low and highbrow comedy. And there's plenty of gags. I feel like anyone could like this show if they're not scared off by the first episode. You know what I mean? Totally. I, I yeah. fucking love it. That's a great plug. Oh, thanks. You know what else we need to plug this episode? Um, Dear listeners, we have some big and exciting changes coming to the podcast. Yeah, we, we're going to kill each other. Uh, we're going to what? Kill each other or yeah. blow each other? Oh, okay. You cut out a little bit. I wasn't, I wasn't sure what you said. Yeah, we're going to kill each other. And um, you know what? The world will be a better place and we'll be at peace. So <laughs> the end. <laughs> That's so sad. Podcast over forever. No. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, no, actually, listeners, we are moving um, to Patreon for some of our episodes, not all of our episodes. We're going to be uh, starting on a two-a-month schedule here, free and lovely and beautiful. Wherever you get your podcast, you can get two months. Oh, fuck. I fucked it up. Two episodes of Beauty and the Bitch per month. But if you subscribe to us on Patreon and give us hard cash money... Uh, we will give you a whole nother episode per month, right? Yeah. So now, yeah, your boys, yeah, your boys and bitches. Yo. Yeah, so in September now, we are going to whet your appetite by just giving you two episodes for the whole month of September. That's coming up, y'all. That's week after next. Uh -huh. I guess next week when you hear this. And um, we just want you to get hungry. That's what we're essentially doing. We are dangling the carrot of beautiful bitchiness in front of your face and we want you to get hungry for it so you'll come to Patreon and um, get our episodes starting in October there as well. Yes, so uh, more information coming soon on that and we will have all the links and deets available for all of our loyal listeners to tune in. Check it out. Yes, yes. And get hungry, bitch. How can you live without our beautiful voices in your ear telling you what to think about sundry things you it's know it's hard so we recommend you just subscribe honestly yeah. that's that's our recommendation yeah just follow us into the pit dear yeah. friends and while you're following us into the pit you might as well follow us on social media you can find us on basically every platform where uh search out beauty and the bitch or find us at b and b cast we are i mean little girl we're on instagram we're on facebook we're yep. on Twitter. We're yep. on YouTube. We have every single motherfucking episode on okay. YouTube. We are missing like a couple of episodes, but what if for our Patreon subscribers, we don't give them those episodes because they're gone. They're lost. We don't know what happened. They're, yeah, they're very lost. Yeah, there were some good episodes too. It's so sad. It is What's such there? a damn shame. Yeah. Well, anyway, you're right. Okay, I'm sorry I lied to everyone, but <laughs> we really are. Otherwise, everything else I said is true. Yes, really good content on there. And then if you're on Instagram, you can also follow our personal accounts. You can find Mickey at Parker underscore Homestead. Or you and can you can find, oh, I was going to do it for you. <laughs> what? Now we look like fools, Morgan. <laughs> we are fools. We look how we is. You can find Morgan on Instagram at Morganized Mess. That's right. So be sure to stalk us as best you can, and uh, we'll be around. Oh, is that it? Is that have we done everything? We no. did. We did the whole thing. Oh my god. Oh no, you silly. Now we are unorganized. We're we're a organized mess because we also have a blog, Morgan. How dare you? I guess I'm embarrassed. I'm so sorry. We have a WordPress blog, Morgan, that includes that includes um actually every single episode there's a feed across the side of the page and you can listen there if you have trouble finding us other places but as we just said we're fucking everywhere but you, still you should go to the blog and follow just so we're not like losers on wordpress because that that's an extra level of loser if you're a loser on wordpress you're a real fucking loser you know what i mean <laughs> that is so harsh and i feel so saint right now yeah <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, Morgan, I'm going to go solve a crime and fuck the shit out of Weevil. I think that's a great plan for you. I'm going to go directly to bed, but I support you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.